You know, a lesser man might just consider this a failure. A lesser man. Well, there ain't too many of those around. <laughs> so I have been uh, hounded, relentlessly hounded by a subscriber named Greg. Um, he's, he has been after me to cast one of these guys in aluminum bronze. He wants to see a golden horseshoe. And quite frankly, I have put Greg off long enough. Uh, I'm going to attempt it. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I probably would have done it earlier, but I have been having some furnace issues. Um, you all know I built a, uh, I built a bigger furnace, and uh, quite frankly, it's I'm having trouble getting the metal hot enough in it. Um, I did manage to get the copper and aluminum melted and make this bronze, but uh, just barely, and that ain't no good. So I got to fix that issue. But uh, I'm not a big fan of aluminum bronze, <laughs> and I'll tell you why at the end of the video. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and cast this thing. I'm gonna talk about two things in this video um, that hopefully you'll learn some things about. First one's gonna be uh, how, I'm, how I'm molding this sort of not, cast, not casting friendly <laughs> part. Uh, and I'll show you why on paper here in just a sec. And then I'll get into kind of the aluminum bronze stuff and we'll talk about it for a little bit at the end too. So let me take you to paper and just kind of show you what's going on. And then we're going to spend some time in the, the actual cap molding and stuff. I'm going to spend a little bit of time showing you how I did it. There's a, obviously there are multiple ways you could pull this off, but this is the way I did it. Um, yeah, and then we'll, we'll show you the thinnest thing at the end. All right, so there is the horseshoe uh, up close. And you can see here, it kind of tapers this direction and it tapers this direction. So if I were to uh, if I were to do this on paper, what you'd end up seeing, if I were to take a cross section of that, is you'd see it kind of shaped like that. All right, there's a taper on the back side, and then there's a larger taper on the front side, on this front side. And when if we were to look at that, casting that in sand, let's just say I cast it kind of the traditional way and I did it face down just it would be like this uh, sitting in here and if I have the sand if I fill this thing kind of like this with sand when I go to pull this thing out this sand right here here all that's going to break out it's going because when I lift this part straight out this direction all that's going to break so what we have to do is we have to get the sand kind of down to this parting, what it would be a more natural parting line. And that's what I'm going to show you to do. So uh, when we do that, when we have the sand at this level, this part, oop, nice straight line there, this part of the part can lift straight out this direction while this part will come this way out of the sand, nice and clean. This is hand, or this is forged, so it ain't perfect, and the line is kind of wonky but uh, we'll get her done. Okay, we've already got the uh, drag rammed up. I'm gonna flip it over here. Uh, you see the runner uh, is already in there, the spin trap. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and start placing things in here for the cope. So we got the pattern, we got the horseshoe, we got the um, gate. And I'm just gonna draw around this horseshoe here because I need to cut it down. So I'm just gonna draw a line just so I can see where um, the horseshoe is going to sit in the uh, in the mold. Right there it is. Now I'm just going to go ahead and start digging this out of here. And I'm only taking out enough material so I can get down to that uh, natural parting line that's on the part. So I'm not taking a lot of material out. Now I want to do it wide enough that I can, uh, you know, have some material outside of the thing. I don't want it to be uh, just a, a real thin fill in here. Okay, we got it all cleaned out. We're gonna go ahead and get things placed in here now for, uh, we're gonna start fill, I'm gonna backfill uh, into the uh, the horseshoe. Just wanna make sure it's, it's in the right spot for where the runner's gonna, or the gate's gonna end up being. I'm gonna press it down in there just to make sure I've got a good flat surface on the bottom now. 
and I'm going to fill in around it and just kind of pack in to that natural parting line. I'm going to, it's going to, going to go down to that height, uh, make sure I can, and then I can cut it away and have a nice release point. After I get some of this excess sand cut away, I can start cutting down to the uh, part line now. That's what I'm doing here. I get it all the way around. I've got to go on both sides and just try to cut down close to where that part line is going to be. Okay, we've got everything cleaned up. Now I'm using the back side of the spoon just to kind of pack that sand down in there. Uh, a little tighter, make sure I've got a nice straight parting line along the part. So there's no real magic here. It's just a lot of cleaning, cutting, you know, shape, pressing. It's just kind of repetitive action. Our fingers crossed we got it to the right place. And we'll go ahead and put the uh, cope on now. So what we have now is that bottom taper of the uh, horseshoe that I showed you at the beginning is down inside the drag and that upper taper will be up inside the cope and we should be able to separate the two, uh, the cope and the drag, right along that line. So we'll go ahead and get all of our stuff put in there, our gate and our, our spin trap and our sprue. And it's all pretty much standard fare from here on in. Um, I want to take this opportunity to let you know, if you haven't seen it yet, I have a whole series of videos on learning to cast metal. And I'll talk about all of these steps about ramming up the uh, mold and the different pieces and the vocabulary and everything. So if you haven't checked it out, uh, there's a link at the top of the screen. And I'll also link it at the, uh, at the end of the video as well. This offset pouring basin is an example of one of the things we talk about in the series and why it's important. All right, we're all cleaned up. We're going to open this thing up and uh, start getting the parts out. And kind of happy to see that. The uh, horseshoe stayed down in the drag, and you can see there reasonably good definition uh, in the uh, cope. And the other thing I noticed, too, is I have a clean parting line. I don't have a bunch of sand broken out, which was exactly what I wanted. Uh, all that work for for basically this. I mean, now I have a clean release of the part. There you can see the nail holes actually came out in the cope. They're great definition. I'm just going to clean off the sand here but in that gap between the uh, gate and the part because I don't want any loose sand entering the part. Okay, so this is funny. I was going to use magnets to lift the uh, shoe out of the out of the sand, but I found that when I went ahead and started tapping on the uh, shoe to try to release it, the uh, the steel rod, amazingly so, <laughs> the steel rod sticks to the shoe. <laughs> I had to scrap that plan, take the magnets off, and uh, we'll get it re uh, uh, we'll tap it again, and we'll get it re <laughs> pulled out of there. And I'll use the magnets to pull it out this time around. <laughs> there we go. Nice, clean release. Nice and clean. That's exactly what I was looking for. Now, I only use about four pounds of pressure, but it's that piece case still broke off. And that was my bad. I, I should have done a better adhesion of the sand when I put it in there, but oh well. Bill, this is for you. I am cutting some vents. We'll do a trial close here, close everything up, then reopen it, just blow out any loose sand that uh, might have fallen off the cope into the into the drag when I closed it the first time. And we're all closed up, ready to go for the uh, pour now at this point. And here we go, we've got a nice easy pour, get the crucible down close to the basin, nice smooth pour, keep that sprue full. And here we go, we're done, nice non-turbulent pour. There's what the inside of the sun looks like. All right, we're cooled off. I think, yep, yeah, yeah, we're cool. <laughs> Open this thing up. It looks good on that side. And what do we got here? Yeah, everything filled up on the, uh, the cope, too. So you can see that part that uh, blue broke out. It's right there. But other than that, the uh, parting lines are real clean. Uh, nice definition in the part. As I'm cleaning this thing off here, I notice there's something going on back here that I'm not real happy about. There's a hole. There's a hole right there. See it? And we'll talk about that in a minute. There's a big hole right at the back of the part. 
All right, so there it is. I kind of sanded it, kind of started polishing it. Um, and there's a reason I'm not holding it. <laughs> I'm gonna show you why here. Boom. Yeah, it just broke. I um, I was polishing it and it fell out of my hands. It actually hit me in the hit my leg, and I almost stopped it. And then it fell and hit the ground. And then it did it hit the ground and did that. So you remember when I uh, showed you in the when this thing was coming out of the sand? I pointed it out with a nail. Uh, there was a little hole right here that I could see it. That is what's known as hot spot shrinkage. All right, so here's one of the reasons I don't like aluminum bronze. It shrinks like nobody's business. I, it has got to be, of everything I've ever poured, it is the worst shrinking material I have worked with. Uh, I don't know why it is, but it shrinks a lot. And if you don't feed it, forget it. I mean, you're going to have shrinkage. It's just going to happen, and, uh, and you're going to have problems. And this is a problem. We're going to. This is a problem. Hot shot. Hot. <laughs> hot spot shrinkage. Uh, is a problem that you'll definitely encounter when you're doing this. Stop. Let me show you what that is. All right, so here you notice, we actually, when we did this, this is the feeder I used, I fed it kind of like right there, all right? Metal came in this direction. This was up in the cope. And you have this step here, this piece that is sort of a ridge, and it forms a right angle right there. In that spot right there, boom, right angle. Now, what hot spot shrinkage is, is when you have a spot, a hot spot. <laughs> Look at it this way. If this is my sand, and um, let's just say the, the, the mold is, is here, uh, and I'm filling this thing with metal, right? Let's just say I'm filling it, metal's coming in here, and it's, and it's filling across, and it's filling across, it fills up this mold in here. If you were to, if you were to say, you know, every spot along this sand, this is the sand, this is all the sand up here. If every spot along this sand had a heat value of one, let's just say, make it simple for ourselves, right? One. Everywhere that those lines come up and touch the sand, I have a heat value of one because I don't have any, it's not, it's only touching on one side. Now, when we do something like this right angle, so now I've got, um, uh, how am I gonna draw this? Now, let's just say I got my hand, I got my sand here, and in this case, I was pouring up in the cope, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw my part was here, and then it does this, and it kinda does that, all right? So metal is in here now. Metal is coming up and filling this, this void here. When you have hot spot shrinkage, what you have is now, if I consider this a one, well, I have to also consider that a one and that a one and that a one. So when I'm, nope, this doesn't exist. So now I've got metal coming up, heating the sand here. It's also heating the sand here. This spot right here is a two, right? All of this was a one. That spot is twice as hot. The sand gets heated from this side and this side. What happens then is while, let's draw that part again, right? So there's the part. While this part is cooling and all of this metal is starting to kind of shrink down, because it's aluminum bronze, <laughs> it starts shrinking. Well, what's gonna happen is this area right here is the hottest part of the mold. The hottest piece of metal right, is right there because I heated it from both sides. Now, when I start shrinking and I start pulling away, what's gonna happen is it's gonna pull from that hot spot. It's gonna pull from the molten metal and it's going to create a void. Let me just show you what that looks like right there. This was a little tiny hole. When we first started, what it looked like was just a little tiny hole. And you break this thing open, look at how big that is. And you can see exactly where it is, right? It is underneath those right angles, right where it's really hot and that metal is going to want to shrink away and it's going to draw from that spot. 
That is not an air bubble. It is not porosity. It is not, it's not something that got poured in there as a bubble of air, right? That is a, the, the effect of that metal shrinking away and forming a void inside the metal. What I should have done when I poured this thing, um, it probably what I should have done is put some kind of big old feeder over here on top of the on top of the uh, gate coming in. That might have helped me with this piece. I could have just as easily had the shrinkage here. And in fact, if I were to cut those open, I'm not 100% sure that I wouldn't find a void over here as well. Um, because those do exactly the same thing. We're heating the metal from the side and from the bottom. And it might have uh, shrunk and pulled away. The worst shrinkage on the part is right there for what it's worth too. It's here and here. It's not up on the tall spot. It's right there in that spot. So I would guess if I cut that open, we would find another void. That's it. That's. I told you I would tell you why I don't like aluminum bronze. Well, here's here. Let me count the ways. <laughs> First of all, it, it's hard. This is it's. You can't file it. If you file it, the file just skates across it. It's harder than my files are. Uh, other bronzes, brass, aluminum, I can file that down and I can shape it. This stuff has to be cut with abrasives. Um, you can't file. It sucks. And now you're using a grinding wheel and you're, or you're trying to get inside this thing, an angle grinder in there, forget about it. You're just going to tear it up. Number one, it's very hard. Number two, I told you about it. It shrinks like nobody's business. It shrinks? <laughs> like a frightened turtle. Pain in the butt. Now, I granted, if you're casting, if you're just making coins or something and want to show them off, great. I guess, you know, it, it polishes up nice. It's nice yellow. But if you're trying to make something, <laughs> golly. People use this stuff for like, uh, I want to say bearings, but um, not bearings, but... Um, bushings and things uh, on boats where they've got, it's got to be hard metal. Things are going to be rubbing against it. And you don't want it to wear out and you don't want it to corrode. They'll use something like aluminum bronze for that. So there are reasons for it. Um, God, not for me. I don't really like it. So Greg, I hope you're happy. <laughs> I'm sorry it took so long, bud, but uh, hey, you know, and uh, I'm not going to make it again. Uh, nah, not going to do it again. <laughs> so that's it for me. You guys uh, take care of each other. Be a blessing to one another. Uh, just say something nice to somebody today. It's easy. Just say something nice. It's easy to do. And have a great day.